Okay. Um, is this stuff you can verbalize, or do you need to send me a picture of it? No, I can verbalize this. Okay. So first it says, um, solve by square root. Okay. And A is 4x squared minus 80 equals 0. Okay. What's the very first thing we can do to simplify this? Probably divide it by 4. What's the next line if you do that? Um, x squared minus um, Okay. And the next line? Um, you, you, oh, do you have to get 20 to the other side? Yeah, this is the one time where you don't want everything on the left side. In other words, when there's no x term and you're trying to solve it by square roots, then you want the x squared to be all by itself and the number to be on the other side. Okay. Now, this is the bit of the tricky part. This is where a lot of people make their mistake. What's the next one? Um. Oh, this is the factoring. Not factoring. The what? Not factoring. Oh, it's not factorable? Taking the square root of both sides. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, when I take the square root of the left side, I get x. What do I, what do I get when I take right. the square root of the right side? Um... And I'm not looking for a number. In other words, it's plus or minus the square root of 20. That's all it is. That's all you're doing, you're taking the square root of both sides. What most people leave okay. out is the plus or minus. That's the mistake everybody makes. It's not oh. just square root of 20. It's two different answers. Remember, we're looking at a quadratic here. So we always are expecting two answers. Now, that's also not simplified. What is that simplified to? Um, what the, well, the square, yeah, the square, 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 root of, square root of 20 is not an acceptable answer. You would lose points for that. Okay. Um, simplified. All right. Let me solve that. Not to a decimal, but you can pull a whole number out of there. Right. Okay. Oh, you can pull a whole number out of there? Well, think of factors of 20. Are there any factors of 20 that are a perfect square number? That's what you should always try to consider when you're trying to simplify these. Is it 5? Well, it's 5 times 4. 4 is the perfect square number. Oh, okay. In other words, this is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And that is a whole number, too. Okay. So you're still left with the radical answer, which you want. You never want to turn this into a decimal because then it's an approximation. But you always have to get it down to the simplest radical. In other okay. words, a radical, that, a radical that cannot be simplified. All right. 2 root 5 is. Root 5, 5 is a prime number, so there's no way I can simplify that. All Some right. numbers, like, can root 10 be simplified? Um, no. No, because the only factors are 10 and 1 and 2 and 5, and neither 2 nor 5 results in a whole number when you take the square root of So we don't ever do this. In other words, it's not wrong. That's a true statement, but we do not simplify root 10 
You only simplify if you can pull a whole number out of there. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, so it's still solving by square roots, but it's 5 parentheses x plus 4 squared equals negative 45. Equals negative what? 45. You sure that's what it reads? Yep. Okay. What's the first step? Um, probably foil out the x plus 4. No? Only because they say solve by square roots. Oh, right. Well, we need that. Once we can get it down to that, then we can just take the square root of both sides and solve it. Okay, well, should we distribute? A much different solution method than solving by factoring. Right. Okay, well, can we distribute the 5? No. You can't distribute the 5 as long as this term is being squared. The 5 is not being squared. So I can't distribute that until I square it, or I can get rid of that 5 in other ways. What can I do to get rid of that 5? Um, add it to the other side. What's the 5 currently doing? Is it being added, subtracted, a multiplier, a divider? You gotta divide it. It's a multiplier right now. Yeah. So you always have to do the opposite. You can't add it. Adding 5 to the other side would not get rid of this 5. But right. you can divide both sides by 5. And that does get rid of it. And now I'm left with x plus 4 squared equals minus 9. Now, have you, you've had imaginary numbers? Yes. Okay. What is our next step? Um, to square root both sides. Okay. What do I get on the left? On the left you get x plus 4. Okay. On the right. And then you get 9i. Would you leave out? Uh, plus or minus. Right. And you need the plus or minus even when it's imaginary, only it's not 9i. Remember I had to take the square root of this. What's the square root of minus 9? Um, 3i? Three, 3i. Three three yeah, the way to look at these, in other words, when I'm taking the square root of minus 9, if that gives you any confusion whatsoever, then always do this. But you can always do. And this part is i, and this part is whatever it is. In this case, it's 3. So that becomes 3i. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, you still need a plus or minus. Whenever you solve any equation by square roots, you always begin your answer with plus or minus. Now, we're not quite done. What's the last step here? Um, we have to bring the 4 to the other side. So the answer would be x equals negative 4 plus or minus 3i. Yeah, and that's a good method. In other words, it's good to put the minus 4 in front because you want your answers to be a plus bi format when you're talking complex numbers. I don't want it to say 3i minus 4. Um, just because that that's not incorrect. They're both correct, but it's more conventional to give it an A plus BI format. Plus you'll notice this looks a lot like how you, the kind of answer you would get if you solved by using the quadratic formula. Notice that this is going to be the minus B plus or minus and the square root all that other stuff. Um, so this is definitely the format you want to give it as an answer. Okay. What else? Um, let's see. 
Okay, it says, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but it says plot, label, and find the absolute value of negative 3 plus 6i. Yeah. Plot and label it. Okay. When you are graphing imaginary numbers or complex numbers, the horizontal axis is not the x-axis, but it's the real axis. And the vertical right. axis is the imaginary axis. Okay. And now, is all you're plotting is A? In other words, if I'm looking at this as being A plus BI, I'm plotting the A coordinate as if it were the X coordinate, and I'm going to plot the imaginary coordinate as if it was the B coordinate. Okay. So I would go minus 3 plus 6. That's where it's at right there. Right. And I'm not sure it's proper to label it exactly like that, but um, probably, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, how you label a point in the complex coordinate system. Right. However, the last part, when they say take the absolute value of that, they want you to take the square root of a squared plus b squared. Oh. Okay, well, what is that? The square root of minus 3 is a plus b squared. Okay. That's all, that's all that that means. And okay. Not sure that it means absolute value. Uh, it might be called the modulus. It might be called um, a number of things. Did they call it absolute value, or did they just use the absolute value sign? Um, they call it the absolute value. Okay. Well, and then now let's reduce that. Let's simplify that. So we got the square root of 36 plus 9, square root of 45. Simplify that. Um, square root of 45. You need to think of factors of 45. And then um, you kind of have the perfect square numbers stored in your brain. In other words, the perfect square numbers are 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Is 45 divisible by any of these? Um, That's the way you need to kind of think of these. Do them. Well, it's divisible by 9. Okay. Well, that means the root 45 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Right? 9 times 5 is 45. Mm -hmm. And then that is a whole number. And that's what we're looking for. Whole numbers. Now, in this case, we are not going to use plus or minus. Okay. That's because you only use the plus or minus if you're solving an equation by taking the square root of both sides. If okay. I say, what is the square root of 45, I'm assuming that's a plus. Okay, that makes sense. If I want negative square root of 45, I'll say it. Negative square root of 45. In other words, it's like a polynomial. If you don't put anything in front of the x, it's presumed to be a plus. If you want it to be a minus, you put the minus in. And uh -huh. when we're talking about um, absolute value, a magnitude of an imaginary number, that's another way to express this. Uh, it's just plus. It's not plus or minus. Okay. That's why everybody forgets the plus or minus when you're using it to solve an equation is because we're not generally used to putting it there. In other words, yeah. we're generally when I see square root of 4, I'm square root of 4 is 2. But notice that minus 2 times minus 2 is also equal to 4. Yeah. So...
All right, what else? Um, well, it says factor and solve. Okay. And it's 4x squared minus 7x minus 2 equals 0. Okay. Cannot take a greatest, my first step here is to see if there's a greatest common factor. In other words, if, they were, if these were all even numbers, I could take a 2 out and simplify it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I can't. There's no greatest common factor. So I have to try to factor it like I would any quadratic. And I'm only going to spend a limited amount of time on it because it may not be factorable, in which case I need to use the quadratic formula. And there's always a fine line between how much time you spend trying to factor and the quadratic formula. <coughs> so, how, how does this factor? How can I see if I can factor this? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a 4x squared, so, okay, so it'll either be... You've got to separate four... that out. You've got to, divide, you've got to uh, break that into two terms. What are they going to be? 2x and 2x. That's where I would start. I always start with the factors that are closest together. What are the signs going to be? Um, the one, the, they have to be opposite, correct? In other words, yeah. there's no way I can produce a negative 2 without the signs being opposite. Right. In this case, plus minus is the same as minus plus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's not very many factors of 2. So I could try a 2 there and a 1 there, or I could try a 1 here and a 2 there. Well, notice that neither one produces a proper middle term. What, what middle term is produced by this combination? Um, the middle term would be... Um, the term is always made up of the multi of the product of the insides plus the product of the outside. In other uh, words, this is the way I always check to whether I've factored it right. The product of the insides is 2x. The product of the outsides minus 4x gives you a minus 2x. That's not right. So immediately we see that there's not going to be any combination if we do it this way. So, okay. you've got to go back and break up the 4x squared in a different manner. What else? How else can we do it? Uh, How else can well, you factor you could, 4x squared? You could just do 4x and x. Ah. That's going to end up working. Now, we still know it's plus minus, but now minus plus has to be considered also separately. Because plus minus is not going to be the same as minus plus. Right? right? Because this coefficient's not the same. As long as the coefficient of the x's is the same, then plus minus is the same as minus plus. But if it's different, then I have to consider both scenarios. Now, let me try the 1 there and the 2 there. Now, hold on. Yeah, that's a good place to start. In other words, where we start at this point is kind of random, although you can kind of see that that 2 is going to have to multiply the 4, right? Right. So let's start over there. In other words, I'm never getting to 7 unless the 2 is multiplying the 4. Well, let's put the 2 there and the 1 there. What does that produce for a middle term? Um, so, well, can I just ignore, like, the 4 right now? No, we're, we're trying to figure out what the, the, whenever you're trying to factor something, the difficulty is always the middle term, okay? In other words, it's okay. easy to break up 4x squared, and it's really easy to factor 2. 
the trick is to produce minus 7x in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, the middle term is always produced by the product of the O and the I of FOIL. You know FOIL? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the outside and the inside. That's the only thing that produces the middle term. So when I'm going to check my solution, I multiply the insides together and the outsides together and see what middle term I got. If it's correct, I'm done. So what's okay. the inside? Uh, the inside is negative 1. Negative 1x. Oh, okay. What's the outside? Um, 8x. What's that add to? Um, negative 7. Actually, it adds to positive add 7x. Right, okay. Well, that tells us a lot. In other words, we got the right number, but the wrong sign. So now I know what the solution has to be. I'm going to move this 2 up to the minus sign, and I'm going to move the 1 up to the plus sign. And okay. I'm going to erase that because it's no longer needed. And now when I multiply the insides together, I get a plus 1x. And when I multiply the outsides, I get a minus 8x. Together, that gives me a minus 7x. Okay. Now I've got the right solution. And I don't really need to check to see if that term is correct or that term is correct. Because the way I do my factoring is they're correct by almost by definition. What I'm not sure is correct is that middle term. And in fact, I don't even know how to figure out the answer without doing it by trial and error, trying to produce the middle term. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's just one last thing before, eh, we might even have time to do one more problem. But let's go back here for a moment. And remember, we started this with a plus minus or a minus plus. Now, let's say I put the 2 there and the 1 there. Okay? And it is a trial and error process. Okay? So I could have yeah. started this way. Well, that gives me a plus 2x in the middle. And it gives me a minus 4x and the outside, add those together, I don't even get the right number. So I know that there's no point in trying this 2 down next to the negative sign and the 1 next to the plus sign, is all I'm going to do is produce a plus 2. So you okay. learn a lot with each trial and error that you try. In other words, what I learned by this trial and error is that the 2 can't go on the left side. The 2's got to be multiplying that 4, either in there or there, one or the other. And I just try both until I find whether it gave me the right answer. And in this case, it was the negative sign has to go with the 2, means the positive sign goes with the 1. And then I erase this, so I don't need that. I don't want it to confuse anything. There's my solution. Okay? Now, it's not quite my solution. The problem called for solving for x, right? Right. So what is x equal to? Um, oh, x is equal to... Well, negative 2 or positive 2. And that's one solution. And then is that x equals to 4x plus 1? No. The way you solve these, in other words, the only way two things can multiply together and give you 0 is if either one of them is 0. So I'm going to set that to zero and solve it, and I'm going to set that to zero and solve it. Well, that's how we got our plus two, was by setting x minus two equal to zero, therefore x is equal to two. That's one solution. The other is setting 4x plus one equal to zero, 
now x is going to be negative one-fourth. There's your two solutions. Huh. Okay. Okay. But that's always the way you solve quadratics. The whole point in factoring is so that we can get one thing times another thing being equal to zero. Once you get, there's no, no two numbers that multiply together to give you zero. Only, you can only get zero if one of these numbers is zero. That's what allows us to solve it by factoring. Because if I got to solve it from up there, I have no idea how to do it. Okay. Okay, so that's the whole point in factoring, is it allows you to solve the problem. All right. Anna, I'm going to let you go. I do have a 5 o'clock i got to get to. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. I'll talk to you. Uh, now, on Wednesday, one, let me say one last thing. When you called okay. to cancel last Wednesday, yes. I didn't know whether you were canceling the 4.30 session or the 5.30 session, because sometimes you and your brother will switch off. Yeah. So next time you call, can you just let me know which one? Oh, yeah. I assumed, Sorry. I assumed it was the 4.30 session, and then when I went to have a session with your brother, he wasn't anywhere to be found. So maybe it was the 5.30 session you were canceling. Maybe, yeah. So just let me know in the future. Um, okay, I will. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. No problem. Originally, I had you at 4.30 and him at 5.30, and then I, I know that, you know, you've switched it up, which is fine with me. I have no problem with you switching it up whenever you guys want. But if you're okay. going to cancel, just let me know which one is being canceled. Okay. All right? All right. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome.